All right, so here I have a particle A that has two forces, P and Q, acting upon it. The force of vector P is 35 newtons, and the force of vector Q is 55 newtons. The angle that vector P makes above the horizontal is 20 degrees, and the angle vector Q makes above the vector P is 25 degrees. So in total, vector Q is 45 degrees above the horizontal. Right, it's 20 plus 25 degrees. The question here is what is the resultant of forces P and Q acting on this particle A? So in other words, what is P plus Q? Well, the first thing we can do is use the triangle rule to find the magnitude of the resultant vector, which I will call vector R. Remember, vector addition allows us to draw vectors in a tail-to-tip fashion to find the resultant. If we take vector Q and we move its tail to the tip of vector P, we can then draw a resultant vector, R, as shown. P is still 20 degrees above the horizontal, and Q is still 25 degrees above vector P. The R vector here is equal to vector P plus vector Q. You can see now the triangle that formed when vector R was drawn in. If I draw this triangle out again, we can see that side A corresponds to the magnitude of vector P, side B corresponds to the magnitude of vector Q, and the angle formed by sides A and B is 155 degrees. And we got this by subtracting 25 degrees from 180 degrees. We can use the law of cosines to figure out what the magnitude of R will be. R will be the unknown we are solving for. A would be the value of 35. B would be the value of 55. And the angle gamma would be the angle opposite to the side R, which in this case is 155 degrees. So when we plug this into the law of cosines, we find that the magnitude of vector r is 87.97 newtons. Now we need to figure out the angle in which the resultant vector forms above the horizontal. We only have the magnitude of r, and in order to make r a vector, we also need to have the direction of the resultant force. Let me redraw the angles of our triangle in a more simpler diagram. I've redrawn the shape of the triangle formed by the vectors and included the angles and sides that we already know. We need to determine the angle that the resultant vector R makes above the horizontal, which is this angle here. And I'll call this angle delta. In order to figure out what angle delta is, we need to know this angle which I will call theta. We can use the law of sines to figure this out. Theta is our unknown, and it corresponds to the side of 55. The sine of angle theta divided by 55 is equal to the sine of 155 degrees divided by the side of 87.97. So we calculate theta to be 15.3 degrees. Now, the angle delta would simply be the sum of 20 degrees and our theta angle. 20 degrees plus 15.3 degrees is 35.3 degrees. This means that our resultant vector r has a magnitude of 87.97 newtons, and it's acting at an angle of 35.3 degrees above the horizontal.